hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am your host, Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush the vibe with our guests today. We're going to switch it up because we got a guest. So I'm really excited because... You must be because you were ready. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for you. Ready I'm, I'm, re- I'm ready for you to stop talking. So um really excited because uh this is my oldest like one of my oldest college friends uh essence is actually oh well i'm sorry i just gave your name away but uh, she's one of the first friends i actually made uh at greensboro college Aww. uh and we were cool she was in the uh drama department and just amazing personality um truly southern and you will you'll hear that come through when she starts speaking <laughs> and it's true to who she is. We have uh Essence, the owner, I'm assuming, of the vintage vintage Essence Company. <laughs> uh my good uh lovely friend Essence, thank you for coming on to Rush Vibes. How are you doing this afternoon? I think I'm assuming. good. Listen, let me turn the country up a little bit since I got that. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> until you said it, I didn't pick up country at all from you. And now now I'm here. I'm listening oh, for Oh yeah, it. like deep, deep country. Some days I'm like, the words that are coming out of my mouth are like really <laughs> It's given. I love barbecue, you know. So I love barbecue yes. too. That's that, that's that Wilson, North Carolina coming up there, right? Where yes. Where is Wilson? where is Wilson, North Carolina? For, for Wilson is in Eastern North Carolina. Okay. It's about forty-five minutes from Raleigh, yes. um, thirty minutes from Greenville, North Carolina. If you're familiar with uh, ECU, um, and twenty, not twenty, but two hours from Greensboro. So. Okay. Oh, so you weren't far from home at all when we were... No, not at all. We um, I knew I could not go super far from home. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, being raised in that small town, it was like, mm, let me get a little bit of life, but yeah. I need to get to my mom pretty quickly, too. Aww. Yeah, yeah. I, it's funny because uh, I was actually just having this conversation with my mom. I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't want to go to college, right? Like, I was just told I had to go because I was the baby. And none of my older two brothers went. My parents didn't go or my mom went, but didn't finish. So they were like, all right, it's on you. Basically, you got to go. <laughs> and I only had two. There were, I were only two choices. I ultimately chose between it was Liberty University and Greensboro College. And Liberty was just because like they sent some stuff. And I thought the marketing material looked nice. It was cool. They had a football team and I played football at Greensboro College. So I was like, oh, maybe I could go down here and try to maybe try out. But um, I also wanted to go to school in Florida for like a really brief uh, moment. I can't remember what school it was. I think it was Florida, I think A&M maybe, or Florida Atlantic, one, one of those schools, because they had also sent some material too. And I was like, man, I think I want to go to school in Florida. I've never really been. I was like, I want to go to school in Florida. But my mom shut it down. She was like, no, nah, you're not going. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's like, you too much of a homebody. You're going to get homesick. And it's like nine hours away. If something happens, like we oh, can't get to why? you. I thought it was because she didn't want you far away. I mean, that's probably it, too, but she packaged it as if oh. she was looking out for me, but I think she was being selfish. Yeah, you know, that's crazy. That I wanted to go to school in Philadelphia. Ooh. I there was a, uh, so like David said, I was a drama major. There was a university for the arts in Philadelphia, and I had went there for a summer program, and I was like so obsessed with it, but then while I was there, one of our like RAs uh, who was like looking out for us in the dorms that we stayed in got mugged. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> oh, it's not funny, but they made him get in a dumpster and stuff. Like, thankfully, he lived through it and whatnot. Oh, well. But my mom was like, nah. Yeah, shut it down. <laughs> Should have never told yeah. me that story. Shut it down. Philly's a different beast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I, I've i never told you this, but I love your name, your first name. It's <laughs> I, it, And not to make it about us, but it reminds me of like our oldest daughter's name, Solace, in that it's just, it's like, it's got gravity to it. Like it's, it seems important. It seems like essential, right? So what is the story? Like, is there a story behind how, how you, how your name was chosen for you and and maybe how you like grew into it? Yeah, I wish it was a magical story. Um, (laughs) So I am my mother's only child. Um, I do have siblings, um, with my dad and my stepmom, but my mom was pregnant and I had an aunt 
And she was like, when I have a daughter, I just want to name her Essence. I think that name is just so pretty. And my mom was like, well, you're not pregnant right now, so let me get that. <laughs> Your mom jacked auntie's name? She did. Thankfully, auntie ended up having two boys. Okay. Um, Look so it Lord. worked out. And then, so basically, my mom jacked my first name and then gave me another aunt's middle name as my middle name. So, yes, yeah, nothing thought provoking. My mom was just like, uh, like this that. baby's coming and I need to name it. So we'll, we'll get into this later, but... Um in a in an interview that you did you said your mom was the first hustler that you ever met and this story mm-hmm. is just epitomizes the fact that <laughs> she just yeah. hustled yeah my mom like by any means anyway. necessary um so who is essence tell us and tell anyone who is mm. watching this what a loaded question yeah, um so first off i'm like a crybaby by nature like okay. i don't know i could just think of something like Oh man, that was just such a tender moment. And <laughs> now I just started crying. I was in a session at work one day and they were like asking us, you know, what was our purpose and why why are we working in the field that we're working in? And I thought about my grandparents. I cried in front of all of those strangers. <laughs> like, oh my grandparents, they're alive. And I was like, oh my God. I was so embarrassed. But yeah, very super sensitive, uh, uh empath. Um very much of a giving heart in nature. Um, if I can't do it for you financially, I'll be like, can I bake you a cake? Um, can I make you a candle and put a custom label on it? Like, mm-hmm. what can I do to, to make you feel better? Um, a creative. So when I started as a theater major, of course, I thought I'd be in Hollywood and rich by now. Um, but uh, I got that creative juices and other me- measures from like cooking and to um, I feel like I'm a pretty comical person, not necessarily in the form of going to tell jokes and stand up. But if we're just engaging in a conversation, like I think I have a pretty good art of storytelling to make you feel like you were in that moment with me. Um, a daughter, very much of a mama's girl, very, very family oriented. Um, like my mom had seven siblings. I got yeah. more cousins than I can count. Um, we were like, Without the drama, we were like the version of soul food when I was growing up. We ate at my grandparents' house every Sunday. And when I was younger, my grandma used to cook for the entire family, kids, grandkids, uh, great grandkids, if there were any, every Wednesday and every Sunday. Um, So very much of a family oriented person. Spiritual, you know, God is the OG. Um, (laughs) I'll raise up in in the traditional black church. And yeah, I just feel like uh, to sum it up, I would consider myself like a compassionate creator as well as a a educator. Okay. So the, the, uh, the emotional side of you, the, I don't know how you you said baby or what did you say? Cry baby. baby. Uh, Where did that, was that just always there? Was it something happen? Always. Like you just, you just could could cry because the water was running too long in the sink. Like literally (laughs) just. My family was like, we get it, Jesus. But that's a good thing. Like, I recently <laughs> learned to find out that it's actually very healthy and detoxing for your system to cry. Like, people, like, keep their emotions in, but that's actually something that it's a gift for people who are able to just cry. Like, what are your sources? Yeah, almost? definitely not storing nothing, and just, like, straight up. Psychology. Psychology, articles. what? What, what <laughs> specific ones? They say, like, there's something, like, it within your immune this sounds- system that releasing tears helps like detoxify this, this, the body this sounds very facebook i'll meme. find it i'll find like it, but I it. Put on facebook <laughs> meme. is living her best life because she can detoxify because yeah. she could cry detoxify. detoxify i'm detox david okay you're not listening i'm detox <laughs> <laughs> my, my my bad um he's a hater no not not at all cry. not at all uh do you think that that uh i know you you talked up like the real family uh, the sense of family that you had growing up, close knit mm-hmm. Sunday at grandma's. How do you think that played a role in um, sort of how you've kind of stumbled into your professional career now as a multicultural program coordinator? Or was that, how did that happen? Was it, you know, by chance? So or? I actually stumbled into working at higher ed at Greensboro College. So okay. my um, senior year, I was an, um, a resident advisor mm-hmm. um, in the dorms and in what, three out of the, we had four dorms, so I was in one out of the four dorms that we had. 
Wait, the whole college had four yeah. dorms? Yeah. Uh-huh. It? it was a small school. It was Hill, which was uh, co-ed. So there were suites and uh, that was... Mm, rooms. Mm, yeah, rooms. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm missing out. Um, there was right Greensboro now. Hall, which was the all girl hall. Um, and then there was West, which West. was the all male dorms that really gave prison vibes. It yeah. was um It was rough. It was <laughs> not uh, communal, like, communal considering showers. how much we were paying in tuition, it was ghetto. Yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah. It was it was rough. Like <sighs> Yeah, it, it, it was real I mean just without the bars. Right, but other than that, yeah, it was prison. Communal showers, like dirty. Why do they do that to boys? Like, why do they make the assumption that men want, like, are okay with just? Because we are, uh, <laughs> for the for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, you walk in, you assess it, you're like, oh, this is uh, this is poverty. But then you're like, all right, yeah, well, let's, let's hook and the it TV smelled up. bad, like upon entry. Yeah. All right, let's hook TV up. Let's I've get the Xbox hooked up. I've never been in a situation yeah. besides like family that I've had to like shower around other like a group of females. That would yeah. just be weird. And females yeah. we don't like measure our stuff. I feel like dudes, you guys like measure. Like, do you look like like do you look? Do you do, look, whoa, do you wait, make wait, eye contact? Wait, hold, hold on a second, Essence. Who? What dudes you been talking to that? <laughs> Do you have these conversations? I'm not having these conversations. But y'all brought it up in like communal no, showers. No, don't try to put this on us. Like you, you said go into a communal shower as a man. Like, do, are like, do you? Like, oh, so now you're asking? Yes. No, I, there I, were I, curtains. Oh, there like, were curtains. Yeah, like because I my first dorm was a community shower, but I wasn't just in there looking at butt and boobs. Like that's it was. What I, that's I don't think no. Here, and you said not that thing. part of jail, Jess. So, not that part of jail. Okay. <laughs> no, but I don't think Hill had. No, I mean not Hill. I don't think West Hall had sh- uh, curtains. Oh, see, I didn't know that. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. So, what if you had a female visitor? You got to either go in there early or go in there late if she if she wanted to shower. Uh. Yeah, but I, I, don't know, I, I didn't really have, <laughs> I didn't have female visitors, so um, I that wasn't an obstacle I had to to figure out. But we're gonna come back. Yeah, I never had to shower to in Wiz. Um, not gonna say I never spent the night in Wiz, but I never showered there. Yeah, but I mean, you had wife. a shower. You could go. I guess you could, if right. you were a dude, like you could have been like, "Hey, Essence, I have this girl who needs to take a shower. Can you like escort her to the female showers?" Yeah, yeah I, I mean, because we had that in Greensboro where we had a. I don't know. I don't know about guys ever showering in the all girls dorm, but there was a, a stall that was specifically for if you had a male visitor, and you would usually like yell out in the hallway, "Male on the floor," so that oh, okay nobody would. Be uncomfortable. <laughs> okay. Male on the floor. That's I never. Yeah. I never knew that. Oh, because I guess because I never spent time over at Greensboro. I was um, uh, I guess just West and, and Hill. So, and I, I never knew the shenanigans that were going on over there in, in, in Greensboro. <laughs> okay. Um, let's get back on track. Yeah. <laughs> what was your fault? So, you yeah. Talking about community shots, but yes, go go Essence, please. Uh, was the RA, and I met my supervisor, and that is when I learned that I could work in like higher ed because. The only thing you ever know about people that work in education, they're either going to go be a teacher or a professor. So nobody ever right. talked to me about like the offices that are in higher ed. So first job post graduation, I was a hall director of that beautiful female dorm that <laughs> we just talked about, um, and that just kind of like trickled into like, oh, I can do this. Like I can. My grandparents used to call me a den mother because that was their like old school translation of being a a hall director. Hmm. So that's kind of how I just fell into it. And I do believe that my family dynamic did help that love of people like that understanding everybody's side of the story or not being like, oh, everybody's not going to be like you. Like I always had a family dynamic like when we had those Sunday dinners. You can invite anybody over like, hey, this is my friend, mm. this this is my play play cousin, like whatever. <laughs> Everybody was always welcome at my yeah. grandparents' house. And I feel like they had a sense of like accomplishment when people would be like, oh, that was the best collard greens I ever had or a potato salad. So they're like, yeah, bring people so we can show them how delicious this, <laughs> this food is. Um, so my family was just always like super accepting and inviting and loving of everyone. So that um, definitely helped me when I transitioned into this world of higher ed, because I feel like college for me was like 
one of the first times where I saw so many people that weren't like me, especially being a theater major. Mm. Um, when I would tell people I was a theater major, they're like, but you're not weird. You don't act like them. I'm like, <laughs> oh, wow. <sighs> the art. So why I got to be a weirdo? Like, <laughs> So yeah. I just feel like that opened my eyes to more people that didn't look like me because I always, I mean, grew up around my black family. I went to the majority black high school, majority black middle school. Uh, so college really helped. But I feel like that compassion component was instilled to me by my family not to be like, oh, well, I've never been around someone who may identify as you. Um, so I think yeah. that helped me a lot to not just be like, oh, a person that's not like me, run away, you know? Yeah. You know, we talked <laughs> about, uh, James and I talked about this <clears throat> on the episode that you missed. And, um, we, we we talked about our experiences uh, as black students at a uh, at a PW PWI. What was it like for you? Um, was it easier because you were in the theater department, so people were more just in terms of personality were generally a little bit more diverse, or did it not? You know, how did what was the campus experience like for you? Essentially, is what I'm um. So I feel like I kind of got to see like both sides. I feel like sometimes I would be treated a little different if I did say I was a theater major by mm -hmm. my people who I would identify as my peers. Like okay. if they'd say well, what your major is, I guess they would expect me to say business or, you know, sociology or something. Then I'm like theater and they're like, whoa. But <laughs> I also got that on the other end of being with the theater kids because we had to take all of our classes together. Mm -hmm. We would be in rehearsal together. After rehearsal, you're running that show for like a week or two. You're doing all of that together. Um, they also had a theater floor where all the theater majors live together. That's mm -hmm. where I drew the line because I'm like, listen, at this point, now we're all going to be in the bathtub together. Cause <laughs> this is a little bit too much. All right. So I kind of like try my best to like not blend in, but not be a stereotypical theater mate. Like we literally would eat lunch together, dinner. Yeah, we had know. the first two tables of the dining hall. Like I you knew that was a theater. Like it was really yeah. like being an athlete to a certain extent. Cause we did everything together. Um, and I didn't want to be that. Cause I don't feel like I went to college just to be immersed in one part of college. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I had my theater friends. Have my black friends, <laughs> you know, it just, I was able to mesh those two worlds. Like I never had a theater roommate. My first roommate was an art major. My second roommate was, I don't even remember what her major was, but she was a basketball player. So, mm. um, and then my junior year, I moved off campus and lived with two uh, potheads. So again, I'm always just living around people that might not necessarily <laughs> do all the things that I do. Um, so, yeah, that I just feel like I got kind of got to see both sides of it. Some days were hard because the theater department was majority uh, white students. So mm -hmm. in my time there, mm, I could literally count on myself. Mm -hmm. It was like five of us. Yeah. It would be like no more than like four or five black kids in the theater department at a time. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes there were uncomfortable conversations being had at the lunch table and then you're like the the token ancestor person gotta you know <laughs> be like hey you probably shouldn't say that out loud right. um so yeah but i feel like i had a, a healthy balance of both worlds and i feel like greensboro college was kind of like you had to make it what you wanted to be because mm. there was no black student unions there were right. no safe spaces for for right. us question for you so growing mm -hmm. up in wilson what about your upbringing made you want to pursue theater? Um, so it was just one of those things where people are like, oh, my God, you're funny. <laughs> also, much like David, I did not want to go to college. I hated school from elementary. Um, I cheated on my first spelling test in the first grade. Like, <laughs> You're very transparent. It, what? Education was not my thing. I enjoyed going to school because my friends were there. Mm -hmm. um, but... I knew I had to learn things and for me it was either go to college or get a job. I was pretty spoiled growing up. So going just to go work at 18 and yeah. take care of myself was just like ill. Right. So I chose to go to college and I only applied to, I think three schools. There was the university of the arts in uh, Winston-Salem. Um, 
I applied to East Carolina University and I applied to Greensboro College because I used to do community theater in Wilson and um, two of the people that I did community theater went, went to Greensboro College. So that's how I found out about how good their theater program was. So um, everybody just always just told me I was like naturally funny and if you don't know, want to go to college, you don't know what you want to major in, like math, negative, English, right. that's a lot of writing. Um, <laughs> it just was like, I'm going to go to be a theater major because that is where I feel the most comfortable. Um, so, yeah, it was just because I was funny and there was no TikTok. <laughs> there was no reels uh, right. to get your creativity off. So it was just after school, I was going to audition and rehearse for plays. Um, and then I think I was even like a a late bloomer to the traditional theater kids. Hmm. Like I didn't get in my first play until I was in the 10th grade. I, c- I couldn't talk Broadway. I hated Shakespeare. Um, it wasn't no, have you seen this? You know, Wicked is coming. We couldn't afford Broadway. Like, yeah. <laughs> my first monologue that I did the audition was from the color purple. Hmm. Cause I can do movies, right. but I don't, I don't know theater. Um, so that's just what it was. I literally did not, I applied to Greensboro College and I did not get admitted into the theater program until the day I moved in. I auditioned the day that I moved in. Oh, wow. So it was really up in the air for me. I could have been going back home the same day. Wow. Wow. Um, Fun fact. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that. That was very good to know. Um, <laughs> you like, I mean, because that, that's like a pretty big situation to be in as a 17, 18 year old, right? Like, yeah. Like, tell me what you want to do for the rest of your life. Right. And like, I know, well, all right, I can do this audition. And but if it doesn't work out now, now what am I going to do? So, um, but I guess, you know, you were only about an hour and a half from home. So it wouldn't have been like, (laughs) like, (laughs) but I did not want to go back. (laughs) Yeah. Like you had to trek across the country. Uh, All right. Two questions uh, before we move on to the next big question. Uh, One, you said you lived off campus with two weed heads. Did you ever partake? She said pot. Pot. Weed heads, pot heads. Um, she works in I America never. Education. Don't put her on the spot. Huh? I never ever partook with them um, Essence. because Essence. it was. Huh? Essence. She said with huh? them. Oh, with them. Oh, okay. This this your story or mine? <laughs> <laughs> I like her energy. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean. Just now meeting you. I mean, if you just live with one she weed said, head. Is this, is this your story I could I could understand you ability to resist, <laughs> but you're living with two. I'm just saying. Okay, let me give you background. I was super churchy, right? I did not even own club clothes when I stepped Aww. into college. Like, I, my first night at the club, I wore a candy stripe shirt and pearls, okay? I, With I, my flats. Okay. <laughs> so, I uh, no, I didn't because I never usually liked the people that they were around. Um, right. And every time people get high, they would be eating my snacks. Mm. Like, why are, why are you over here in my cupboard? That, that part. Um, so, no. Uh, and, I mean, contact high. I had enough of that. So. <laughs> um, Not like they were smoking it on the balcony. They were, like, just chilling in the living room. Yeah. Wow. Um, uh, second question. What was your favorite uh, production that you were in in school? Greensboro. Um, it was probably the um, Blues for an Alabama Sky. Because... Um, it was very rare that we were able to do things with an all black cast. Uh, um, I, I wouldn't saw I think I wouldn't watch that one. Yes. Blues for Alabama Sky and Honorable Mention would be um South Pacific. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um so let's talk about vintage essence mm. company. Um take me to its inception. Uh, I know on your uh, website, you mentioned that it was kind of born out of the pandemic, sort of like yeah. Rush Vibes. That's what it was for us. It was a yeah. it was it was a sort of a passion project that like, we in the house. We got all this time. Um, I think we had the kids on a decent sleep schedule or maybe not the youngest, but at the time. But it was like, hey, <laughs> let's just have like something we can do together because we never really done anything creatively together. And then also it could kind of be like our date night because it's our one night of the week we know we're going to be uh, with each other exclusively so what was it like for you like how did you arrive at the point where you're like okay i'm going to start uh, a business okay so 
um, at the beginning of 2020 in February, I had just moved to Georgia. Um, and this is probably the furthest I've ever lived from home. Like I live in North Carolina, I lived in Virginia. And so now I'm like about, I'm just outside of Atlanta, about seven hours away from, um, from my hometown. So, uh, went, started the job in February, March. It was like, Hey, we're going to shut down for like two weeks to see what's going on with this COVID thing. And then it went for, from two weeks to yeah. just kidding. We'll let you know. <laughs> uh, so I'm literally sitting, I have yet to like really engage with my coworkers. So I don't know anybody. Right. I'm sitting in this room well it was a second bedroom but i turned it into a closet so i'm sitting in my my closet room on zoom we're just like winging it because at this point the job doesn't have any like really virtual capabilities because that's not what we signed up for um and i was sitting at my computer scrolling um on instagram and a ad popped up about a can a virtual candle making class and i was like I don't have nothing else to do. Like, let's just <laughs> Why not? see how this goes. Like, yeah. I it's funny because I am, I cook. Um, all my friends know that they're always like, when you come, can we get a, um, and I'm like, I'm not here to be a chef, but everybody's always putting in special requests. So I, I love to cook. It's very therapeutic for me. So I was like, if I can cook, I think I can make a candle because there's got to be like, the same process. Yeah. So I took this virtual class um, and the girl was showing us how to uh, melt wax and all this kind of stuff. So I'm learning all of this um, virtually and I'm writing down notebooks and all this kind of stuff. And then it was just that I was like, I- I'll play around with this later if I'm bored, you know, and I just let it sit. But it was like, I kept getting all of this insight and this, I told you I'm spiritual. The spiritual download of ideas just happening, right? So mm-hmm. I'm like, I like candles. I, I give a lot of my money to candle companies. So this should be something that I can do. Like, right. um, there are certain candles that I love that are seasonal. So I'm like, well, what if I can make the candles that I want year round? Like, a, cause I'm very into like mannish earthy scents when it comes to candles. So I'm like, let me learn how to make that. Um, and I bought a couple of pour pots and I started teaching myself via YouTube university, what I didn't learn, Mm -hmm. um, in the candle making class. And I would make candles. I would ship them out to my friends, be like, test this, tell me how, can you smell it? How's the burn time for you? Um, and I had the name before I even launched the business. So, um, it's called vintage essence because I am always told that I have like a a old soul, kind of like a, a old lady spirit. I'm very, I don't have kids, but I am very maternal. Like when I'm around people, I want everybody to be good. I, I'm very much of a, have you eaten today? Um, are you okay? Uh, you're thirsty. Um, drink a little water. So that is my energy. So vintage essence. And then, you know, y'all talked about my name. Shout out to my mom for stealing a pretty cool name. It, it works for everything. Um, so that's just how it was. And I never wanted it to be, vintage essence candle company because Mm. i see it being so much more um Mm. that's why we just slap the co on it and it really uh i tell people all the time i I feel like it was very much of a vision that god gave me because i candle is um making is very much of a science okay again did not like school so i was like science like i gotta know measurement but it turned out to be like cooking like i need this much fragrance oil to this much wax. Um, and now it's gotten to the point where I can freehand a little bit and, you know, how they say let the ancestors mm-hmm. guide you and yeah. whatnot. So it literally kind of just fell in my lap scrolling through Instagram one day and it turned out that mm. I was pretty good at it. <laughs> so it turned into a business. And what, uh, what are all, all the products that you sell? So um, currently I do candles, wax melts, and car diffusers. So you can have it in your house and your car now. Um, And then my cooking side is called A Dash of Essence. So on my Vintage Essence website, you can buy uh, e-cookbooks that I have made. So I have two digital cookbooks on that. So I want us to be like a lifestyle brand and my my, um, 
motto or my vision mission statement is that we want to supply you with things that make you feel the most comfortable and cozy wherever you are like invite the people over i want you to be able to be like oh uh, i pulled this recipe out from a dash of essence and while i'm lighting this vintage essence candle while i'm cooking if y'all want me to drive you around we got vintage essence in the car as well so i want it to be like a free-flowing thing um i think i have about six fragrances in my lineup right now um and i try to give all of my candles names that have a story behind it or so that i can so when you're like well what made you name this i'm like i'm glad you asked here's our story about this one well i love a candle and just listening to you just talk about your company and knowing that candles kind of was is at the core it makes sense just how you you were talking about being maternal and making sure everyone i know me personally like I light a candle because I want that cozy feeling. I want to yes. feel warmth. So it, it goes hand in hand and just listening as you're describing it. I'm like, it makes absolute sense. Like everything that you have is all about comfort. So uh, I think that that's really cool. And I definitely uh, need some candles. Yeah, we got to get y'all a cute little one with a rush vibe label. I know. We can put it on the tape. But I have an issue with candles. So I love accumulating candles. I don't light them like because I don't want to lose the candle. Like I don't want I don't want the candle to go away. So I won't have you ever used a candle warmer? I have. I just don't like losing candles. She speak to the mic. Like I have candles. I love candles. I have an obsession with candles. I will buy a thirty dollar candle if I have to buy one um, because I'm in love with the smell, the story, and all of that. But then yes. it's like okay, it's time to light this candle because you know the weather. It's nighttime, and I'm just like no, because if I light the candle. The candle burns and the candle goes away, and then I don't have to. We got to get you some wax milk. I, we got I, to. So I, you can like light your can. You can have your candle in the forefront, but have the wax melts in the back, so you can uh, still so smell. I still get, okay, all right. Yeah, that, that might that might be it because I have about forty candles in this house that I just won't light because I I went through a season where I was lighting candles, but then I I was just like, wait, these candles are going away, and then I have to replace them. I feel that. So I have a strong connection to candles. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better about lighting candles. But Yeah, I, we, I mean, we've got candles here on our set. We've yeah. got one behind each of us, and we have this one. I, don't, I think we lit them for, like, maybe the first episode yeah. this season, and then we haven't. I haven't love candles. Since. They're just, they're good. They're I know. Just, and some people, like, will just have candles lit all the time, and I want to be one of those people, but I also want to keep my candles. Got it. I, it sounds like you got enough to, oh, I, to get I, I started. Do. I definitely, I, I do. Um, so I'm going I'm to take inspiration from you. I'm going to start lighting my candles more. And what I, are your favorite fragrances, like smells? So I like food fa- flavored mm. or food scents, which my cousin, my cousin, my little cousin and I, we both love candles. She cannot do, she hates food scented candles. She can only do like sweater weather and those type of things. Mm-hmm. I will do any kind of candle i think it just kind of depends i love peach so i went into Mm -hmm. like anything peach like i have a peach sangria i have like a southern peach candle i love peach i don't like anything cream based like if it smells like vanilla no i love vanilla i have like a creme brulee kind of Mm. candle i don't like that but butter i don't like buttery smelling candles but gotcha i like the snickerdoodle cookies and all that kind of yeah no but anything else i love i love like a winter scented candle holiday seasons like i like candles except for butter based candles (laughs) noted david do you have a favorite candle fragrance uh no but not because candles aren't dope. I, I enjoy the candles. And that's why I don't really say anything about her excessive candle buying hobbies because they do genu- genuinely smell good. Um, and when we did have, the, when she did have her season where she was lighting them all the time, it, it was great. You know, the ambiance and, you know, when the kids go to bed, lights out, you know, you just have the candles going while you may be watching TV or whatever, just chilling. So no, I I, I love a woodwick too. Yeah, oh yeah, and we yeah. actually on a we we went on a date and we made um mm-hmm. we made candles and I I got mine with a, a wooden wick and it was just kind of cool when it's it's quiet and then you just hear that wick. You hear the crackling. Yeah, the crackling. It was it was cool. So good. Yeah. So no, I'm 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 fine with with candles. Um, <laughs> Best be. I don't I don't know about thirty dollars. Essence, you don't your candles don't cost thirty dollars, do they? 
Uh, no, because I only offer a small candle right now, but it is okay. sixteen. That, oh, that's that's doable. Thirty dollars. Uh, you get like about nine ounces for sixteen dollars. Thirty dollars um, is not excessive. I'm, I mean, I wouldn't be above charging thirty for a bigger candle because, again, I'm pouring these by hand at at the crib. You're buying the experience. Okay. Are you? So I assume you you uh, own and operate uh, vintage vintage essence by yourself. You don't have yeah. any help or anything. Nope. Um, if you ever read my page or my website, it says we. Um, <laughs> that's just manifestation because it's me. That means you and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, me and God just in here. Just making candles. So what? Um, what are your off the top of your head? If you know, what are your your current candle fragrances that you have? Just okay. So can we talk? Which is like I think it's very unisex. It's very like um, to me. It kind of smells like if you were wearing like a roll on body oil. It's got some amber in there. A little notes of bamboo and coconut. Um, Jesus sandals. Um, which is a play on words because it is made from frankincense and myrrh oh. and sandalwood. So, you know, little baby Jesus. Um, <laughs> we just uh, got rid of Bikini Bottom for the season because it was a summer candle, but it was very citrus and pineapple and sage. Um, rest Your Cakes, uh, which is lavender and vanilla. So it's a play on words of you need to go sit down somewhere. Um do not disturb lemongrass, eucalyptus, spearmint, mint, very much of a spa vibe. Um, hookah lounge, which is very earthy, has smoke, patchouli. Um, it kind of smells like Palo Santo to me. Um, that one is actually my favorite. Um, we just introduced for the fall chameleon. Um, chameleon got its name because everyone who smelled it gave me a different note of what they smell some people smell mm. cocoa butter some people smelled coffee vanilla one day i smelled it and it smelled like lemon zest um so i think it fits anybody in every mood because what everybody had in common with it is that they all liked it mm. there was nobody who was like this isn't my thing so let me see who could lounge come in apple tree just a, a fresh macintosh apple no cinnamon involved just a crisp apple um I think that's all of them. I think. <laughs> so, how do you market yourself? How are how do you how did you get the awareness for this brand that you've created out to the world? So, I follow a lot of um, business, women business owners that look like me on social media. Mm. Um, you know, most of the time when we see a brand, uh, when we see the the Apple and the Google and the um, Nike and stuff, we don't know their backstory. We we weren't with them from the ground up. We just knew by, by the time we saw Nike, it was popular and we're going to buy it. Right. So I follow women who have been on social media in my time and um, one of my favorite female business owners online, her name is Mia Ray. Her company is 10 years old, but I've been able to see her journey from living in her mom's attic to taking pre-orders of the tote that she was selling, to catching the bus to the post office to deliver these packages, oh, wow. um, to uh, not knowing if the shipment was going to come in because she was buying, uh, she gets all her stuff from overseas. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been a journey that I've been able to watch from the ground up. And so that now that I see that she is like this empire it gives me a motivation or a sense of self that like I may be at the, the ground floor now, but um, to not be like an overnight sensation. Cause the thing about social media is you, it only takes one video to go viral and it can change your whole life. But do right. you have the content inside of you or the will to keep going after that one viral moment? Like, was it just a viral moment or, or are you a natural creator or a creative? Um, so I am building a company that by chance, if I ever go viral, I have the products to back it up. So we won't be a, a one trick pony. It's like, okay, I got your attention now. Let's keep, let's make this longevity. Uh, cause it's something that I initially, initially thought would be a hobby to get me through the pandemic, to be a stress reliever, um, to not feel like I was going crazy in between the four walls. So now it's something that I love to do. Like I can sit with you all and talk about candles all day. Like if you're like, I'm this type of person. Like that's why I always ask people, what type of candles do you like? 
because if if I have something similar to it, I'm going to tell you about it or it can get my gears turned on like, okay, I might need to introduce this because this is what the people are telling me that they like. But I also want to, I don't want it to be like, oh, my favorite Bath and Body Works candle is XYZ. Cool. I don't, you go get that from Bath and Body Works. Mm-hmm. I want the fragrances that I make to be like, I know I can only get that version from Vintage Essence. Um, so that's what I'm just working on longevity. Um, mm-hmm. and so I follow a lot of women that I have seen from the ground floor. Um, so that you can be like, Hey, that can be me. Um, can I see myself as a, a mega corporation? The one that we didn't see from the ground floor? Yes. But I can't relate to the backstory of, uh, of a Reebok. Like I can relate to the backstory of a Mia Ray. Mm-hmm. So do those, um, cause I think you asked about uh, like marketing and stuff. So do you, do you just have like your, your personal network? They share a lot yep, of your so work. I have, I'm going old school. I'm word of mouth. Um, okay. I'm heavy on when people are giving me reviews. Like I could be like, okay, you can listen to me. Of course I'm going to think my products are amazing. Right. Um, but here are honest reviews. Um, and so Instagram, uh, I forget about Facebook sometimes, but the aunties love Facebook, right? Mm-hmm. So when I do posts on Facebook, I will get the aunties and the uncles on my website. So I have to remember uh, for Facebook. Um, so yeah, it's just word of mouth. Um, if you place an order, I will put a sample of something in your, in your box so that maybe you might have purchased a candle that's in your comfort zone. But then when you smell this, one, you might, oh, I might need to try this one for next time. Um And then it's more so my friends and my family are big supporters. And I feel Mm -hmm. like sometimes that's more wild than strangers because people who know you don't necessarily always feel the need to support you Mm -hmm. um, because they're like, oh, she might pass me out one for Christmas or for my birthday or something like I don't have to buy a candle. But my family and my friends are returning customers. And I know that they're not just returning customers because it's me, because you at least have to like the product or it has right. to be of good quality. Um, yeah. So that means a lot to me. And then they're able, they're like, send me extra business cards so that I can pass them out to other people. So uh, I feel like word of mouth and um, social media are my biggest marketing platforms right now. How much time do you commit to it a week? Um, so the good thing about candles is I can spend a weekend or two pouring Mm -hmm. and then I can like literally be off for a couple of weeks if I am well stocked up. Um, so usually I don't have to, I would probably spend like a whole weekend pouring a couple of dozen of candles or wax melts. Being that I'm working from home, I can't pour but so much anyway because I don't have anywhere to put it. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Like I'm stacking boxes on top of boxes in this door behind me. So, (laughs) you know, so just, um, and one thing about it, I can't pour candles if I don't feel it. Um, Mm. if I'm not in the mood, I can't, I can't do it because I might mess it up or it might be too much fragrance or not enough. My grandfather used to tell us growing up that you can always, taste a person's emotions in their food. So if they were having a great day, hmm. it might be the best meal that they ever cooked. They were having a bad day, it might be too salty, it might be too bland. So he always taught us to never cook for a whole bunch of people when you're upset or sad or anything because you might not be your best self So in that meal. So that's how I kind of go to it with my candles. If I'm burnt out from my nine to five, I might just need that Saturday to decompress and I might come back to it on Sunday. How would you, being that you work a nine to five and you have, you know, your side hustle, your business, Mm -hmm. how, how are you motivated? Because like you said, you know, you burn out, you know, you're working nine to five, five days a week. How do you keep yourself? What is it about having this company, making these things that keeps you motivated? Yeah. For one, it's the people. Um, I can have a day where I'm like, oh, I'm not a millionaire yet. What is going on? <laughs> and I'm just like deflated or I will talk into my group chat and just be like, hey, y'all send me good energy. Shoot a prayer up for your girl. I, I can't, I don't have any more to give this week. And it could be a random person that'll be like, 
girl, I just put in this hookah lounge wax melt and it's just giving me everything. And they don't even know, like, two days ago, I might would have been like, forget it. I'm not pouring anything else. So Mm -hmm. uh, that or going through like social media. So I'm currently running a social media contest um, on my Vintage Essence Instagram. And it's the tell a friend contest to like increase my followers. So I'm telling people like, if you can get me eight new followers just from you, I'll give you one of each one of our products in for free, just for you telling. So just to see people like sharing that or tagging me in it, like, oh yeah, you, you need to shop with her. Um, and also another motivator is I feel like since this is a vision that I feel like God gave to me, I got to be careful and responsible with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just know that on days where I'm not feeling it, he's going to give me the grace to keep pushing it because I never, I wasn't five. Like when I grow up, you know what I want to do? I want to work in a candle factory. Like, no, I wanted to be a pediatrician, mm. but then I was like, Ugh, school. So <laughs> <laughs> the running theme with me. Uh, so yeah, just that I just have a responsibility or it could be a day where you feel like people aren't thinking about your product and then they'll tag you in a, on an Instagram story and be like, oh, this candle gets me every time, or this is my favorite bath time candle, or um, I like to have this one burning in the background when I'm cooking. So it's just the little things when you think people aren't watching um, and your products are still making a difference behind the scene. Cause I'm not the only candle business in the world. Like a ton of people are doing this, but I just, know that I have data that allows me to continue to pushing and and standing behind what I'm doing. And then just being a creative by nature, I just get so excited when I'm like, I think these two fragrances will work together. And then Mm -hmm. I do it and then I smell it and I'm like, woo, girl, who are you? We got a winner. Oh my God, you made that? That smells amazing. And then I just take little wax melts everywhere with me and I'm like, smell this. Um, so yeah, it's just like you did it. Like you, you can keep doing it. You're not just going to be boxed into five fragrances. Like you can, you can keep hitting these out of the park. I love that. I really, really do. Yeah. I think it, it underscores that, you know, a, a brand is more than just its product, right? Like you have to be attractive, especially you're the only one who work who works for. It. I mean, you own it. It's your it's your baby, right? So, you're going to be the one out there pushing it. Anytime someone goes to your IG, you're the face that they're going to see if they're going to see anybody. So, I think it speaks yeah. the fact that you've been able to grow your following. Um, and and like you said, you know, sometimes the people closest to you are the ones who support you the least. And the fact that you know, you essence your personality has been able to. Uh, cause people to continue to support you and, and buy product by product after product. Um, I think it just speaks to you as, you know, the face of a brand you as a personality, uh, that you've been able to attract that, uh, retention. So, cause there are people out there with banging products, but as a personality, they kind of suck or they're not strong. Yeah. That's not their strong suit. So, you know, they don't really get the return or the repeat engagement that someone like yourself, uh, does or, or would. So, yeah, you definitely can tell when people love what, what they do or not. I always say that whenever you go into like a job interview and you can kind of tell if people hate their job. Mm-hmm. Like oh, yeah. you just feel the energy in the room like, so what's your favorite part about working here? And then everybody's kind of like looking at each other and you're Getting like, paid. Next, five, o'clock, five o'clock PM. <laughs> <laughs> like get me out of here. So I feel that and I'm not at a place where I can pay people to be the face of my brand. Um, I mean, I can give you free candles, but as for me, um, I'm going to use this theater degree and I'm going to make commercials, my little mini commercials. That is, um, I feel like that is a boost. Sometimes it helps sell the products instead of me talking about it. So um, when I was home back in North Carolina, a couple of weeks ago, I did a commercial for apple tree with my cousins. And it was like literally the most cheesiest thing that we could do. I had my cousin frolic through the yard and we put the apple tree candle in a tree to make it look like we were picking it out of the tree. Like it was, it was just giving all of the cheesy information you ever see. We had a baby in the commercial. The baby don't even know what's going on, but now you're a prop <laughs> in the commercial blankets under the tree. And it's just like, people are like, yeah, I'll buy this because this commercial is just really, 
doing it for me. Yeah. And we literally put it together in like two minutes because wow. it's just like I had this idea, but I didn't have people. Now I'm home with people and let's let's get it done. So you've talked about how you feel that, you know, you're obviously your spirituality, your connection and how you feel God has given you this responsibility. Mm -hmm. So from a visionary perspective, if where do you want this this company to be in five years, 10 years, where do you see it going? Um, Do you see yourself continuing to work a nine to five? So I. What's crazy is I don't mind working a nine to five because um, I actually love what I do. Um, so by day, I am I work in higher ed and I'm a program coordinator in a, a multicultural achievement office. So um, I basically help uh, underserved students, black and brown students um, feel like they belong at the university. Uh and I create safe spaces for them. And so I do feel like being in higher ed is a part of my calling as well. Um, they ain't paid me the big bucks yet. <laughs> but I do, I don't dread going to work every day. Hmm. Like I, I don't mind that I enjoy being, um, some universities I've been called Miss Collins. And I just let the students call me whatever now, as long as, it's not out of my name. So right. Miss Essence, whatever, because my thing is I'm trying to be who we did not have at Greensboro College. Like yeah. I didn't have a safe space or somebody that I could be like, mm, I don't want to go to class today. And these are the things that are, are happening with me. Um, yeah. I do feel like I ended up having that with one of my theater professors, but I'm just trying to be what we didn't have, especially at these PWIs that usually sometimes sit in the middle of nowhere. Mm. So like in these rules. So I do not mind working a nine to five in that field because I'm, I'm fulfilled with that. Um, so in the next five years, I want Vintage Essence to keep getting out there. I want us to go from candles and wax melts to other things you could bring your, in your home. I want robes with our logo on it. I want uh, room sprays. I want uh, things that even college kids can use. So I know like two of my little cousins are in college and they're like, we got to stock up on our wax melts because we can't, we're not supposed to have candles, but we want our room smelling good. So I want it to be if somebody came into your home and be like, oh, you shot Vintage Essence too? Like, I, I love that. Like, I, I love uh, their products. Um I would definitely love for that me to turn into a we uh, to mm. to have a facility where because you know how uh, older black women are always like the gatekeepers of their recipes and they usually yeah. don't want to get rid of it like Mm-mm, big mama says you can't have her sweet potato pie recipe but you gotta like give it to somebody because one day you won't be here so I, I want to get rid of the being overly a passion, overly passionate about this being my baby, and I can't, I can't let you breathe on it. To um, having people around me that are supportive of the vision without trying to taint it or tamper it. And if I give you this eleven herb and spice recipe, I know that you're not going to try to take it from me to go build your own own brand so i would love to just have people around me who are supportive of it and are willing to help me push the the vision out so that we can be in home to home and maybe with some sponsorships or whatnot uh so they could be like you know today's sponsor is vintage essence i would love all of that to to just be a giver and bring out these products because i know what lighting a candle and a glass of wine does for me at the end of the day. Like everybody needs that moment of decompression and I might not be able to go out to an island or go to the Dominican, but I can just have this little spot on my couch, light my do not disturb candle and be like, okay, I'm on that island right now. Nobody bother me for an hour or two. So that is just, I want to provide people an, an oasis where no matter where they are in a, in a sense of peace um, where you can look at my website and you're like, I bought this because of how she described where it could possibly take me on a day that's not going too well. Mm. Yeah, I can definitely see your 
your storytelling uh, ability just kind of like beaming through. Um, and I think that that's like really important when you are a small business um, and you're competing, especially in a category like fragr- like candles and fragrances, right? Like yeah. you said, somebody can go to Bath, what's it, what's it? Bath and Body Works? So I always yeah, mess I names up, it. so thank you for, for saving me. <laughs> it's um, okay, they're not paying you anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Did they just lose their CEO? Sorry. No, it's that was Bed Bath Beyond. Oh yeah, that's Bed Bath and Beyond. Oh, see, I, see, now I you now too, see, it's contagious. Um, <laughs> damn, what was I saying? Yeah, uh, yeah. So I mean, you're competing against like in a category that's really popular, and like you even said it mm-hmm. yourself, like you get a candle from anybody, right? But mm-hmm. I think that there's a difference between and maybe this speaks to what you were saying about you really got to love, you know, what you're doing. Somebody who can tell you there's a difference between somebody who can tell you what a candle is made of. And someone who can tell you about the whole experience, like where the inspiration came from, how you got the fragrances, you know, put it together and what it what it's supposed to to what experience it can give you once you mm-hmm. once you light it. And just sitting here listening to you. I mean, I've had I've had friends and and, asso- and associates who have sold and made candles before, but nobody's ever really given me the story like you're sitting here giving it to us right now. Um, and I just think. I'm I'm a fan. I'm a buy a candle, and I don't really buy candles. I normally let Jessica mm-hmm. buy them. I'm sure. She's, I'm, sure she's, gonna, yes. I'm sure she's going to buy some anyway. Oh, but yeah, I'm I already planned on it. I'm going to buy one personally. <laughs> um, I'll probably get a car diffuser too because we got kids, and they, you know, you know, how kids are. So uh, we'll, we'll get one for the car. So it's so it stays. In, in I heard sense. that the car diffusers are kid like soccer mom style friendly. So okay, um, yeah, yeah, we need yeah. we need it. Um, I'm really enjoy- I was saying, I'm really enjoying just the way you you speak about your product and it's kind of giving me a new perspective on candles because I know people will go crazy when Bath and Body Works has their sales and they'll stand yeah. in line and all of that but to truly have this the story behind it and I'm very big in terms of like being spiritual and understanding that like mm-hmm. you you can transfer spirit so even yeah. to your previous point regarding like you need to be in the right mood and the right headspace because that spirit that you're making this candle mm-hmm. with is is transferring to the consumer so when they light it yeah. up they're they're essentially going to feel that as well so i think it's really beautiful to see it more than just like the corporate level where it's like we're just making these products we're sticking scents together we're putting a sticker on it we're putting it on the shelf we're selling it for 25 bucks but yeah. there's actual an actual experience that's supposed to come like you said a candle and a glass of wine like that does something for people um that creates a comfort that creates a a mood and a zone and like you said you can't go to the you can't just hop up and go to the dominican republic but you can (laughs) have something small that when lit can take you away momentarily so i Mm -hmm. i love that you just kind of changed my whole perspective and just something as simple as a candle um because you're you're actually it's a labor of love and the love is actually going into it for sure. Yeah. I don't think I could ever produce anything just just to be doing it. Like now, one of my prayers was like, God, instill something in me that I can make money while while I sleep. Like mm. I because a baker, a cook by nature. Right. But I have to be fully awake, ready to bake a cake and take yeah. a, a cake order. And let's not go into shipping desserts. It's not an enjoyable. Oh, experience. No. I wouldn't imagine. Um, no. So just to know that I can stock up. 40 candles and they can literally sell in my sleep and and i'm definitely going to have some joy when i ship it because I'm, I'm thankful for you purchasing it or even like the the calmness or the rotation of even just packing the box you know right. not just throwing stuff in a box or being upset when i know i bubble wrap that thing five times and uh the postal service still found a way to break it <laughs> um so and then as smaller businesses, we sometimes do, well, not sometimes, we do not get the same grace as corporations. Right. Like people won't send us the angry email. They'll just tag us on social media and be like, oh, this product sucks. Like I can't believe it arrived broken. Like I have no mm-hmm. control over if it arrives broken or yeah. not. Um, so I kind of feel like in a way I may be overcompensating or trying to get my presence out there as somebody who is compassionate and cares about their business so that you know that if something does arrive um, messed up, that you can reach out to me. Like I'm not this machine that is 
I'm literally writing you those emails or replying back to them myself because um, I do want you to have an experience, a, a good experience. And uh, I just hate that as smaller businesses, we always have to go above and beyond because if you tweet about me, it can it can ruin me. Mm-hmm. But if you tweet about, you know, a Fortune 500 company, mm-hmm. you're just one, one in a million, you know. So definitely um, trying to put out the energy that I expect in return from, I call my customers candle cousins. So the same energy that I want to receive back from my candle cousins, I put that back out there. You know, I, I'm actually glad that you mentioned the candle cousins because I was, <laughs> while I was doing my, uh, my research, uh, I, I stumbled across your, not stumbled. I went to your IG page and, you know, I was just kind of looking through and I saw that you have your uh, your candle conversations with mm-hmm. your your candle cousins, and I, I just thought one of the, the the play. I just love the the alliteration number one, um, and it's it's catchy. But uh, where did you get the idea just to have? I mean, do you do these weekly? Do you do them uh, biweekly? Like, what's what's the schedule, and where did you come up with the uh, the concept? So I was trying to do them. Um, I try to do them every Sunday. Um, okay. Again, it's another thing where if I'm not feeling it, I just you know let the candle cousins know like um, I don't have any of myself to give you today, so we will spin the block next Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, but it came from so my website platform is through Shopify. Um, shout out to Shopify, and I was chatting with one of the reps about something for my website one day. And she was like, um, so what are you doing for, for marketing? Like to get boost your sales. And I'm like, well, I'm on social media. I usually like email out discounts. I try to have a sale every holiday, this, that, and the third. Mm -hmm. Um, and she was like, maybe you should set up something where you like light a candle and tell the people about what the mood is. I'm like, hmm, that, that might be something. Like, ma'am, is this what y'all get paid to chat with? Because I'm all like in, in the chat box, like, girl, hold on, let me get my notebook because you preaching today. Um, So I didn't know what that was actually going to look like, right? I'm like, oh, am I going to be in my bedroom? Am I going to be trying to put a robe on? Is right. my hair going to be tied up? Like, am I trying to really, like, waste my products and light a new candle every week like <laughs> to give y'all a vibe at home? Um, so how it initially turned into the candle conversations is that since I am an online business, you just, you don't get to smell my candles before you uh, purchase them. Okay. Um, so I felt like it would help if I would take you on a journey with me and be like, you know, everybody is not a candle connoisseur, right? We're not like, Oh, the base note of citronella and you know it has a touch of vanilla and musk like we we not talking the thou there about candles i want you to be like look honey this smell like a good smelling man when he walked by and mm-hmm. that's just what this candle is um and that's how we became candle cousins because can- cousins are my favorite part of the, the family tree mm-hmm. so i feel like if i call you my cousin like we are here so I'm like, this is what this candle smell like. So I'll talk about the notes for the people who are into that. But I'm like, listen, when you like this one, you want to have a bubble bath. It might put you to sleep. Make sure to blow that candle out before you go to sleep. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. Or even showing like candle care. Because um, I didn't even know about candle care until I got into this. Like I, I lit a candle and I kept it moving. But mm-hmm. We're talking about trimming our wax. What happens if the candle tunnels and I still want to use it? So that's where the candle warmer comes into play Mm -hmm. or uh, making sure that you're not um, lighting the candle under a draft. All of these things to preserve the life of your candle and for it to have a a clean burn or telling you why my candles don't produce soot because I'm using a a soy wax and a clean wick. Um, So it's part candle education and introducing you to my fragrances and this part life um one week i was up there and i just was not having a good week like sales were down work was getting on my nerves um i literally well a couple of hours before i recorded the candle conversations was in like 30 minutes full of tears like in the bathroom like just Mm -hmm. having a whole breakdown of the day 
And I wiped my eyes, waited till they got a little less puffy, put a filter on. And I was like, look, um, y'all, today was not it. I was not having a good day. Um, I was crying. Business was getting frustrating. But then um, somebody messaged me, um, another black woman who sells candles. And she was like, "Um, do you use this kind of wax? I got a 10 pound bag of it. You can have it for free. Mm. She don't even know that I'm like down on supplies this week. I'm like, I'm not putting any more money out of my pocket to produce these candles. Right. And it was, she literally sent a message probably like 10 minutes after I had just stopped crying. Mm. So I'm going on candle conversations just as transparent as I could be like, hey, just keep going. Because on the day where you thought you were done and you were down to the bottom, you never know where someone sees you or picks you up in their spirit or just like, mm. Cause we could have easily been in competition. Like it could have been like, I'm not giving her no wax. Cause right. I, I don't, I don't want her candles to be better than mine. This, that, and a third, but just to have you on people's mind and their heart and to keep going. So that's, that's what candle conversations is. Or so I'll present a candle or a wax melt and I'll be like, this is my move for today. And let me tell you X, Y, Z of what's happening. Wow. That's awesome. I'm, I'm moved. <laughs> I'm, I'm over here. I'm over here. Somebody cutting, somebody cutting onions over here, man. That's, that's you know, because life be life, in, and as business owners and social media content creators, we always are showing the beautiful side of it, right? Yeah. Like, look at me packing my orders. People are selling, but we're not talking about that week when didn't nobody care. <laughs> yeah. So how do you how do you feel about that? Like just being totally authentic with your your community that you're building. Do you do you feel like that helps them? <clears throat> excuse me trust you more do you feel like that that actually helps build a relationship to know that they're always going to get when they get you they're always going to get an authentic essence do you do you feel like that's something that you can kind of use to your advantage as opposed to like the typical creator where it's all you know sunshine and, and rainbows absolutely um because we all know everyone is human and right. i don't ever want to be a facade of myself. I don't want you to be like, well, I saw her in person and she was not given what she's <laughs> given on those candle conversations. Like she all talking about like this, let that go away. Every day is not Zen. Every day is not sunshine and roses. Like some days I had a bad day in traffic and I wanted to fight somebody and you know, all of those kind of things. So I just feel like, um, it's important for my audience to know that I am human too. And, making these candles started off as a, a stress re reliever. And I, I think it's, and you all can relate to this with you all launching your project during the pandemic. It's just, you can always say, well, this is something that we thought of in the pandemic that, that we needed to decompress, that we needed to have our date night and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like that'll always be a beautiful story that people can relate to. Cause one thing, for sure in life is that we all went through that pandemic together. There was nobody having a better day in the pandemic than the other, because right. it was the first time where everything, well, in our generation, everything had to shut down and we just had to be still and be, uh, people had to be trapped in the house with other people. Me, I was like, Oh, people where I need them. Where, where did they go? Like, how am I, my dog wasn't even with me yet. He was like still in North Carolina. So I'm like, Zag, I'm really out here learning myself and that started me being transparent on social media. So I did a lot of cooking during the pandemic and I had this whole little Instagram story situation of like, this is what Island I'm on today. And I would pour my water in a wine glass and put a slice of coconut. I mean, a slice of cucumber in it um, just to keep my mind going and, you know, not being like, Oh, when are we ever going to get out of this pandemic? And I feel like, even being in Georgia, it was scarier for me to go outside. Mm -hmm. um, and I, the Instagram and social media accounts that I gravitate to are the ones who are like real life people. I, I don't need a, a Instagram, a page full of Instagram baddies because I, that's not me. I'm, 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 I'm not in the BBL community. Like I cannot <laughs> relate. So I need to see people who uh, I can see myself in. And so that is the audience that I tend to, um, to that tend to gravitate to me. And then BBL is taking over. 
Mm-hmm. The they are. Anyway. And I'm like, Dad, girl, you a teacher. How you a boarder? <laughs> <sighs> Meanwhile, I'm like, dang, I, they probably took, a, they probably took a they PPP did. loan. Yeah, they took loans out for them. <laughs> oh, I really wish Vincent Essence was a thing during the PPP. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> um, you, you got anything? No, All right. I, I've enjoyed just learning and hearing about yeah. you. And I really like your personality. Like, you're just very Oh, Essence, is, am- Essence is amazing. Thank you. Listen, I'm going to I'm gonna have to slide up on y'all one day. Please do. Um, so last thing, and I, I intentionally say this for last because I, I saw that you were featured in Shout Out Atlanta. Uh, mm-hmm. So I read the uh, I read the interview, and um, I mentioned it in the beginning when we were talking about your name that you said your mom was the first hustler you ever, you mm-hmm. ever knew. So um, you know I'm I'm a big believer in you know giving flowers and whatnot. So I'm just kind of curious, you know what uh, what impact uh, has your mom had on just everything that you've kind of described through your professional career, like what kind of influence did she have on you having the confidence to launch a business? So I'm assuming was the first one that you ever, that you ever tried to do um, something that you were relatively unfamiliar with that you were new to um, <clears throat> excuse me. And, and the fact that you're now during your, your day job, someone who has mm-hmm. a significant impact on, on young black people. So what, what kind of, just what has she meant to you as you've kind of grown into adulthood and, and through it? Not you trying to pull the crybaby out. Um, my bad. <laughs> so my mom is like, has always been like a superhero to me. So um, my parents were married when, um, you know, I was a baby, but I don't remember their marriage. So all I know is the single mom version of my mom. Cause I think they got a divorce when I was like, super early into elementary school. And yeah. then my dad <clears throat> was military. So even when they were together, uh, he was always stationed somewhere else. Sure. So my mom didn't really travel with him because she always wanted to create stability for me. So that mm-hmm. was like my first sign of seeing so- someone being so selfless to make sure that, that I had the family dynamic, even though it wasn't traditional mom and dad, but being surrounded by my cousins who I were ra- was raised by, by my, like they were my siblings. So my mom was a beautician um, by nature. Um, since when she was pregnant, we actually had a jury curl and she was, there's a picture of her like standing in the back of the beauty salon. I think she worked up until like her seventh or eighth month as a beautician. Um, mm-hmm. So standing on her feet every day. So she literally was hustling with, with me in her belly. Yeah. Um, and then she also used to work a nine to five at a pharmaceutical plant. So when I was in middle school, my mom got really sick and she almost died. Mm. Uh, and so she had this rare skin disease that like made her esophagus close up and everything. Um, and my family kind of sheltered me from everything that was going on. So I was bouncing from my grandparents' house to auntie's house and everything, mm. um, while my mom was in the hospital. So I never really knew how bad it was. I would like hear conversations in the back room of, mm my um, aunts being like, is it bad? Like, is she going to make it? Mm. And then coming in front of me being like, oh, it's okay. Like, let's go, let's go to the park or get something to eat or whatever. Um, So even in that, she was like, you know, still being that superhero. Um, And we, growing up, we always used to have a a drawer in the kitchen and it was called her, her little hustle drawer. So my mom is also a a good cook and a baker by nature. Mm -hmm. So it's funny. I was absorbing all those things and didn't know when I was growing up because I actually hated when she would bake because I just remember the house being so hot. And I'm like, here here comes Christmas or Thanksgiving week and now the house about to be 200 degrees because you got (laughs) to bake all these cakes. And she used to make yeast rolls from scratch and she was the first person I ever saw make a cheesecake. And, but uh, she would also, if, she would do hair in a beauty salon, but she was also a kitchen beautician. So if somebody called after hours, she like, yeah, girl, come over. I'll wash it, you know, bump, bump your hair. She was the old school, like um, curling iron. There was no outlet. She was putting them on the stove. And then she, she disinf- she going to hate me for telling this, but she disinfected the kitchen and then it'll turn back into the bakery. Um, Cause she'd be like, stop telling people that I cook and do hair in the same thing. <laughs> like my dad, girl. <laughs> 
I mean, they ain't seen no hair in the food, so you're good. So I always watch her do that. So that drawer was where she would keep all of the hustle money. So mm-hmm. I'd be like, Mom, we got this going on for school. And she like, go to the drawer. Uh, and I'd be like, oh my God, we are rich. Not <laughs> knowing that she'd be behind closed doors, we'd be struggling. She yeah. said there were times where she would come home and the lights were off and she knew she had to get them back on before I come into school, before mm-hmm. I came home from school. She said she came home one time because she was behind on rent and it was a padlock on the door and she had mm-hmm. to get that off before I got home from school. So I'm like, how? I was only in school for a couple hours. Like, how are you making all of this shape? But she never let me see the struggle. She's always like, okay, we got a bill come up. I, I need to bake four cakes. And if I can get three people to come by and get their hair done, I can I can make that bill shake. Mm. Um, so even when she came out of the hospital, when she almost passed, the first thing she did was throw me a birthday party because she had missed my birthday while she was, was sick. I was like, who are I know you don't have any money because you been laid up in the hospital for months. Um, and I watch her have to fight to get disability and all that kind of stuff. Mm. But she never, ever, ever, ever looked at me in my eyes and be like, oh, no, we can't do this or you can't have this because mama don't got it. She she had a plate sale to send me to that university in Philadelphia for the summer. I was like, mine's going to cost like fifteen hundred dollars. She was like, like the grill up. We selling lead quarters. We going to put a dessert in the plate. Like, always. it was never, mm. no, you can't do it. Mm. I'm, I'm going to make a way. And so, me being a, I'm not going to pretend like I'm all this strong, independent black woman because my husband can come tomorrow if he wants to. Okay? <laughs> but, it was, I got to make it shake. So, even when I graduated college, if I didn't get the job, I'm going to go get two or three jobs until mm. I get the job. I'm going to work at the restaurants. I'm going to sell the margaritas. I'm going to work at JCPenney's. I'm going to go work at Target seasonally. I've worked at Macy's. I've worked in hotels. Like, mm. Because my mom always showed me that we got to we gotta go get it. I mean, we weren't raised in a social media age. Like, you couldn't, you know, announce a product. Like, I used to sell candy out of my locker in middle school. And it was because my mom was taking me down to Fred's Food Club, getting the big old boxes of candy. And she would be like, okay, here's your profit. Now we're going back to buy. And when I got caught in school <laughs> um, selling the candy, I was like, mom, they got my candy. They said they're going to take my money. She said, no, they're not. My mom was like, tell them your mama's sick. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to help the family. So, the art of a hustler, like, they're not taking no money. <laughs> so, I was like, yeah, my mom, t- turning on that theater degree that I didn't even have yet. Oh, my mom been sick. We've been down bad. <laughs> I'm just trying to make a way in our household. <laughs> so, I was sent back home with the money, but I was not allowed to bring me <laughs> to school. <laughs> Yeah, my mom is not oh, a scammer, man. okay? No, um, no she FYI. doesn't sound like one. But she was like, this is what we got to do. So you can't sell school. So then we became like the candy lady in the neighborhood for a little while. And so candy out of the house. Just She just always instilled in me that you ain't got to be down bad. Like you, you mm-hmm. can go get it and produce a product and sell it with your personality. I mean, she might have... I mean, in that moment, she she was she didn't make me be a liar because she was sick, but she did have me put on a little uh, production to the school administrators. All right. <laughs> well, great story. Uh, <laughs> shout out to what's your mom's name? My mom's name is Kathy. Miss Kathy. Shout out to Miss Kathy. Yes. <laughs> um, pure one hundred percent hustler. I, hustler. I, I love it. Um, you you sure you didn't want to ask the question you normally ask guess at the end? Every episode, you remember it from last year? No, so you're gonna have to ask for it. It was like advice that you would have for. Oh, yeah, I was yeah, thinking yeah. that earlier, but she, yeah. okay. So, you know, earlier you mentioned that you do, there's, uh, what's her name? Mia, the company that you mm-hmm, watch. Mia Ray. Yes, yeah. Mia Ray. So, you, with your own, with, you know, Vintage Essence Company, with your own platform, what advice would you give to someone either coming up in, wanting to grow in the candle industry with ebooks um recipes or just 
someone who has a desire to be entrepreneurial, what advice would you give that maybe you didn't receive or that has just been pressing in your spirit that you're like, I need people to hear this because they just need to know. Yeah. Um, never ever. And I know it's harder to do now. Uh, I keep going back to the social media world, but do not compare your journey to anybody else's. That's Cause good. like we talked about, everybody's not going to show their authentic self mm-hmm. on social media. It's going to look like they are having somebody order their products every single day because you see that in a 15 second reel and you can't let that get you down. Um, So you always have to go back to your why and your reason of why you started it. Um, Is your reason just because you needed a few dollars that day or is this really your passion project project? Like if you know how in school they had you do a, a elevator pitch so if somebody came up to you and were like, and is like, why vintage essence? Why should I listen to Rush Vibes? You should be able to tell it easily if it is what you're passionate about. So don't just do things because it's a fad or um, I think I could pull this off or just make sure that whatever you're doing and it, it might not be a, a long term business. It might not be a business that runs forever, but start with the idea of it having some longevity because you are the biggest seller of your product. If you're not passionate when you talk about it, why, why would I want it? Um, right. So make sure that you're always putting things in you that that build you up. Sometimes you have to take those breaks from social media because it can rob you of your joy and you don't even realize it. Like, why am I sad? Because sometimes you are picking up that different energy and whatnot from social media and it's transferring to you and you, you could have been having an amazing day, but you've just scrolled past so many things that kind of zapped you. So just staying present with yourself, um, always coming back to your why thinking, on things and not letting anybody to pressure you to run your business like they would run their business. People are always going to come with a suggestion box that you did not ask for. And you're like, they're like, girl, I think you should do this. And you're my therapist taught me to say, thank you for your suggestion. I'm going to keep that, but not feeling like, Oh girl, I didn't ask you for that. Like stop over clouding my mind or oversaturating me with what you would do. Just write it down, take it with a grain of salt and keep pushing to do it how you would be doing it. And and just don't be afraid um, because sometimes you're going to have to do it afraid. But that doesn't mean that it is going to be any less inspiring or impactful because you did it with a little fear. That was beautiful. Awesome. Well, again, I'm inspired. (laughs) Very much so. Um, Essence, thank you so much for uh, coming on. To, uh, to Rush Vibes. I know we had been talking about this. I think I reached out at this point. It was probably about a month. It was before we left for the Dominican Republic, I think. Uh, and I was supposed to get up with you when we got back, and then I didn't. So <laughs> I appreciate you still being willing to uh, come on. As you can see, just with Jess kind of scrambling in here, we're just always going like 100 miles an hour, and sometimes we just kind of, things kind of slip through the cracks. So um, I get it. I appreciate y'all for having me and, and working around y'all's busy schedule. Yeah. Well, you know, we, when we realized that this was going to be a thing, um, we were really intentional mm-hmm. about, um, though, you know, we're still relative, I mean, small in terms of our, our audience and we've got some, some few dedicated family and friends who watch us kind of like, uh, what you experienced with, with, uh, vintage, Jazz, vintage. I don't know why I can't say vintage today. I'm just really struggling to say that word. I don't know why, but, um, <clears throat> we really wanted to uh, focus on highlighting like people who we know who are really uh, extraordinary, who are dope and are doing actually like really creative things. So, um, you know, it's always about, Oh, we got to get guests on. We got to get guests on. And just randomly, you just popped in my mind. I was like, well, one, I was like, I I think uh, something you posted, because I know you said you're not on Facebook a whole lot, but I think you had posted something and rolled across. And I was like, is that a, is she doing candles now? I thought, cause I remember I asked you about catering. I was like, I thought she was cooking or something. So I was like, well, I know essence is amazing. So let's have essence on it. And that way she can, she can explain it. So um, yeah, I'm still whipping pots. They just got wax in them right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I appreciate it. And it's good to catch up obviously. Cause you and I haven't spoken at length. Uh, I think like you said in like four years. So it's, it's yeah. crazy how time flies, but, um, yeah, we loved having you. 
Um, always welcome back when Vintage Essence reaches like a hundred thousand IG followers, and you big, on, and you big, and you big timing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll we'll definitely have you back on. We're definitely gonna be uh, buyers supporters of your uh, of your candles. I think we're probably gonna order yeah. them as soon as we finish. I might gotta create today. a little uh, discount code for you all's listeners. So oh, I'll yeah. Uh, yeah do that because uh, I'll put that in your in your inbox. Yes, well, ma'am. You know please what? do. Fall is coming, so you might need to come up with like a cuffing season candle. Yes, ma'am. Don't okay. be, just, don't, don't be. She knows what she's doing. I know. Oh, I saw, it fell into my yeah. head. So oh, I that was your like that I, was your download. That her, was my download. <laughs> her download. It was in her spirit. Yeah. It's my fault. My hey, my bad. I'll, I'll fall back. A fall I'm sorry. A cuffing season candle. Who plus Netflix and shit? Look, girl, you about to be sold hey, out. The way they about to shut down the password churn is about to be nobody chilling with Netflix. Oh, it's gonna be. Well. Yeah, Hulu, they wild Hulu for live that. and chill. Um, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. All right, so thank you, Essence. Uh, everybody watching uh, and anyone who is here because of Essence, uh, we appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully, you'll stick around. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, like if you uh, enjoyed it. Uh, for the Vibe Tribe, hope you enjoyed Essence as well. Please continue to follow us and engage with us. We're on Facebook, Instagram, obviously YouTube. Uh, your podcast platforms is apple spotify google and tune in and tune in uh that's it for this week we'll be back next week so everybody stay safe uh have fun this weekend but overall just just enjoy life i don't know why i'm why i said that i never, <laughs> I never say Clearly something like that he was a theater maker I'm, you know i'm, I'm inspired i'm trying to give positive energy and give life advice too. Essence got me believing. All right, we are I we, can be we a one this mean we don't need you. we don't need to. We're good. We're she good. got me she got me trying to, you know, step outside my comfort what zone. You covered in him, but we're trying to step it. outside. I'm trying, right, to be, Othello. Okay. I'm trying to be a light. I'm not Othello. I'm trying to be a light for people. All right. So we appreciate y'all. Thanks again, Essence. We'll see y'all next week. Brush Fives, we out. Yeah. None of some grow pains. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now Can't stop me now